Hey, Tracy, I'm going to be getting married. Did you know that? <laughs> huh? Um, no, I had no way of knowing about that, Naomi. And to be honest, I'm not really bothered by you getting married. Really? I know you're jealous of me now. But I can understand that since you are 30 years old now and still a single woman, I'm sure hearing about me getting married before you must break your heart. I guess you should have been more aware that women are supposed to get married in their 20s. I really don't care about what's going on with you, so can you just get on with saying what you have to say? And since I'll be getting married, I'm going to take a very long time off work to become a wife. <laughs> Maybe even for the rest of my life. Is that so? Good for you then. So this is just you trying to rub your marriage in my face then, right? Well, I'm in the middle of work, alright? So I'm going to get right back to it now. Oh, uh, really? I knew that an old woman like you had far better things to do than be a wife. <laughs> But listen, you can take just a little bit of your time to continue staring at your phone and talking to me, right? I mean, you've already wasted this much time looking at your phone, right, old lady Tracy? <laughs> Would you please not call me old lady Tracy? That is very rude coming from someone like you. What? But what I'm saying about you is very, very true, right? After all, you happen to be the oldest woman in this department here. And from what I've heard, starting next year, you're going to be transferred to a new department, right, old lady Tracy? Congrats to you then. I'm sure this is you moving up in the company, right? You must be so proud of yourself. Are you done saying everything that you've wanted to say? If that's so, then I'm not going to waste any more of your time like you've done with me, and I'm getting back to work. That right there is the reason why everyone hates you. You're a cold-hearted supervisor who doesn't care about any of us. Excuse me? I'm just saying that everyone in this department hates you, Tracy. Your character is horrendous, and you like to have fun bossing us all around. I'm sure that you're so happy to be getting a promotion, but from all of our perspectives, we are so thankful that the pile of garbage that was supervising us will be gone. Is that so? Well, you all can go ahead and continue hating me. It's not going to change my thoughts. Sure, sure, sure. I keep acting like this isn't all going to your head right now. Well, I guess everyone is right about saying that you have pride so large that it dwarfs skyscrapers. And I'm sure that's why no man ever wants to marry you, right? <laughs> and do you think you're safe finding a man when he might not even be aware yet just how stupid of a woman you really are? Huh? What did you just say to me? Don't you ever say that again to me! If you're going to try and make jabs at me like that, then I'm going to tell all the other employees hear what you're saying. Go right ahead then. <coughs> hey Sam, I just happened to get my invitation from you to your wedding, but it turns out that you're going to be marrying Naomi? Ah, that's right actually. I've sort of known about how you and she are working in the same company, but well... I didn't want either one of you realizing that, and so, I kept you being my older sister a secret from her. And I didn't want to say anything to you about how I want to marry her, but now that I think about it, the company you're working for is really big, so I'm sure you both have never really met before, right? We are both in the same department, and she happens to sit in the desk next to mine. What? Are you kidding me? Uh... Then that must mean you feel that way about her since she's in the same department as you. Huh? What do you mean by that? Well, uh, how should I word this? Well, she happens to be a lot younger than you there. Ah, I see. So you must have heard some things from her about her position? Well, you don't have to choose your wording wisely with me. You can go ahead and tell me whatever you have to say about things. Well... She told me about an older woman in her department that's being really strict with all the younger women that are younger than her, and that this older woman has been kind of a bully, really. And, uh, she said that this older woman is in her 30s now, but is still single, and so, because of that, she happens to like picking on the younger women because she's jealous of them. 
And she finished by basically calling this woman, who I think is you, a really horrendous witch that has her underwear in knots. So Naomi has started to talk about me that way, huh? She really thinks that I enjoy picking on the younger women in the department because I'm jealous. Yeah. Well, I'm sure she was just joking about half those things. But well, she also told me that you happen to run into the younger women in the hallway and shove them aside. And when they're working, you'll yell at them for drinking any kind of beverage. She's the one running into me when I'm walking in the hallway, actually. And when it comes to her drinking during work time, she has a capped bottle she'll bring in filled up with vodka. I can tell it's vodka just by the smell it gives off every time she opens it up to take a sip. I've asked her about it before, yet she never admitted to it being alcohol. What? But, but Naomi would never do anything like that. And if that wasn't enough, she also really loves calling me Old Lady Tracy. And she'll ask me time and time again if I have a man yet. And if this will be the year I get married. Work is not the place for that kind of talk, especially when she asks such things in a very rude manner. Are you sure? You're sure this isn't just one of the other women at work that you might have Naomi confused with? I mean, you and Naomi aren't even that distant in age, right? I have no reason to mistake who you're talking about as anyone other than Naomi. She sits at the desk right next to mine, so I'm very aware of who she is. Well, I'm sure from your point of view, you don't want to believe what I'm saying to you. But I'm telling you the truth when it comes to how she acts around me in the office. I'm sorry. Well, this isn't me doubting you or anything you've been saying. But I've never seen Naomi act in any way that resembles what you've told me. So I just can't trust what you're saying at the moment. And that makes sense to me. I'm sorry for saying things like this to you after already having chosen the woman you want to marry and finding your true happiness. Well, I happen to think a lot of things about Naomi, and so... I know that. Uh, do you mind keeping what we've spoken about here a secret from her? Please? Huh? But... I'm asking you to please not say anything to her. I still have a lot of time left to this year where I have to be in the same department as her... And I don't want to end my time in this department hearing all kinds of rumors about her and I. Well, you have a good point there. All right. I won't tell her anything about today for the time being. However, you still plan to come to our wedding, right? Well, of course I'm coming. But, of course, when I come, she's going to find out who I am. It'll be all right. I'm just happy to hear you're still coming. I want to make this a really amazing wedding for everything. So please... Never change your mind about coming. And by the way, I'm looking forward to your wedding, too. Now you're going to start going on about me getting married or not? I'm sorry. <laughs> that was just a joke. Now, I'll be seeing you at the wedding. <coughs> hmm? Was the person that I just happened to pass by really you, old lady Tracy? Why are you at an event like this? Ah, well, there's a little something about that. What do you mean, a little something? You weren't even invited to this wedding, so why are you here? And you're here a lot sooner than most of the other guests that are coming, right? I haven't even seen any of the guests I've invited come in yet. Ugh, I knew this would start to be a pain in the butt for me, so I was trying my hardest to hide from you. Hmm? <laughs> So you're trying to tell me you wanted to sneak into my wedding without ever being noticed? I cannot believe what I'm hearing from you. Did you really want me to invite you as though you were one of my friends? Ugh. Can you just leave it? Why do I have to be the one to shut up? You're the one that decided to come to my wedding when I never asked for you to be here. Well, it's been a little bit, so I want to have a chat with you now. I have some time yet until my wedding starts as well, you know. <laughs> That's right. I guess since the both of us are already here and things have come this far, we should have that chat. Right? <laughs> well then, let's go and meet in the lobby of this resort. <laughs> now, tell me again why the hell you think I'd want an old dominating lady like you here. You weren't even asked to come to this event, so stop fooling around with me. What is this? 
You wanted to have a chat with me, and the moment I walked up to you, you poured wine all over me? You should be thankful that was the only thing I chose to do to you today. To be honest, I really, really, really wanted to kick you in the butt and drag you out of here. It wouldn't have been the wine that was red, but your blood had I gone all out with you. <laughs> why are you getting so upset right now? You know the reason why you are messed up in the head. And it's not just me that thinks that, but everyone else that works in the same department as you. None of us even want to see you when we go into work, so what makes you think we'd want to meet you at my wedding of all places? You really have a lot to say. Also, did I just see you talking with Sam a bit ago? You thinking just because you're an old lady, you can have a chance to come here and steal the groom is completely insane. Do you lack every little bit of common sense or something? <sighs> Unbelievable. <laughs> no, there's a reason behind that. I don't want to hear any of your excuses. I want you out of this place right now before the rest of my friends from work show up. You being here is causing me all kinds of stress and it will piss them off as well. I never asked for an old dominating woman to be at my wedding. <laughs> and you sure are not going to be talking to my groom ever again. Well, he's my little brother. Huh? Why are you trying to use some stupid excuse like that on me now? <laughs> well, go and ask one of the wedding planners here about me. Ask them what the name of the groom's older sister is that will be giving a speech today. Sure thing. I'm going to give them a call right now and ask. Really? <laughs> I can't wait to start talking to all the others at work about what you've been up to this time. <laughs> Hey, come on now. It was just a simple joke, all right? I just wanted to see what would happen with you today. I knew you were Sam's sister this whole time, but just wanted to mess around with you a little. And here we go. The moment the tables turn, you run and try to hide behind calling all of this a joke. Well, I've always thought of you as a wonderful woman, Tracy. And since you're always so wonderful, I became a little bit jealous of you, and that led to me spilling that wine all over you in your dress. Look, that wine is expensive stuff, so you should be happy to see it being used on you. What difference does the wine being expensive or not make? Um, well, it, it um, well, uh, I'm sorry about that then. Listen, Tracy, none of this was really meant to be serious. I was just fooling around a little with you since you're my older sister-in-law. So you think by changing your attitude towards me just like that, I'm going to be able to forgive you? Well, I'm sure it won't be that easy for you. But, um, I am praying that you have it in your heart to forgive someone like me. And, um, by the way, are you really Sam's older sister? Can you tell me why your last name is different from his? Well, that's because I've been married to another man for a while now. What? I got married right before I entered the company I'm working for at the moment. The marriage took place when I was in my final year of college, actually. And that is why most of the people in the company who work around me believe that I'm still single because they've never heard of me getting married while they've known me. But I'm not single. I've been married for what's almost going to be a decade now. Ah, is that so? Then, um, what was your original last name? I had the same last name as Sam, Irving. That's... are you serious? Well, if that's the case, um, that means I am so very sorry for a, a lot of things that happened. You think we're still at the point now where you can apologize and everything will be back to normal for you so easily? That dress I was wearing that you spilled the wine on, it is totally ruined now and all wrinkled up, so I'm going to have you pay for it. I'm completely fine paying you back for that dress. I'm more than glad to pay you for that. And you can even make that legal by having a lawyer get involved in everything if you'd like. After all, I'm sure you don't want me getting away with anything now after all the rude things I've done to you before even today. It's interesting that you had a whole excuse made up for all those rude things that you've been saying to me. Yeah, I'm very sorry. I promise to make this apology as wholehearted as I can. So, um, hmm. Right. 
I'm sure that you have been wanting for the two of us, especially me, to sweep all that's happened under a rug and act as though it's never happened, right? Well, if that's not a problem with you, that would be very kind. Right now we're supposed to be getting ready for our wedding. And as you know, there will be a lot of people here today wanting to see me as happy and pure as I can be before I'm wed to my husband. And if everyone that plans on being here today were to hear about the true me and what I've done, well, that might lead to some very bad things happening, especially to me. What are these bad things you're speaking of? You think that I care about how your actions are going to affect you? Listen, the moment you spilled the wine on me, I could see Sam out of the corner of my eye and he saw what you were up to. Huh? Are you, are you telling me that he saw what I had done to you? Yeah, he was even looking me right in the eyes as you poured that wine glass on me. I thought he'd come right up to us after seeing something like that happen to his sister by your hands, but then he turned around and walked away. I'm going to guess that what he saw was too much for his own eyes and that it was so shocking that even his heart needs time to think. Wait, that's not good at all. That's totally not good for me. He needs to understand that this was all a huge misunderstanding. A misunderstanding? <laughs> Hey, Sam, where are you right now? I was looking all over for you, but couldn't find you anywhere. What you saw just a bit ago was all a huge misunderstanding, you know? I, I just happened to run into your sister is all. You think I've misunderstood what all of that was about? Yeah. Look, you know that both Tracy and I are working for the same company, right? Her and I are both very close friends in the office, and we happen to love messing with one another by pouring drinks all over the other's head and body. Then why, while that was all happening, were you screaming at Tracy? I heard you saying she wasn't invited and that she's an old lady. I never thought that my Naomi would ever use that kind of language towards my older sister or towards anybody in a negative way. No, that was just a simple joke is all. Is that right? So... You must think I'm such an idiot that I'd be able to believe in the most simple and weak excuses like the one you just told me there. I'm being honest. Believe me. This isn't going to work. I saw everything that happened there. And also, I've heard about all of this from Tracy herself. About the kind of person you really are deep down. Who I am deep down? I've known for a while now that you've been telling me about how you're being bullied by the old woman sitting at the desk next to you at work, right? But according to what my sister has said about you, you're the one who's been saying awful things and picking on her! At first, I wanted to believe what you've been telling me, more than what Tracy was saying, but after what I just saw, I've made up my mind. I can't do this any longer! What do you mean by that? What do you mean you can't do this any longer? I'm sorry about this but the wedding is being canceled now. What? T wait, that, that right there is not okay. Like, my family is going to be here as well, right? You have to see that by canceling my wedding, they are going to become so sad. Well, you've already made myself and my family very sad by pouring wine all over my sister and her dress like that while screaming at her. But that was... Don't be worried about a single thing. I'm going to go to both your mom and dad and explain to them what has happened here today. And as for the cancellation fees, I'll be paying for half of them. I think that's a fair way of handling all this, don't you? No way. I do not want my wedding to be canceled over something like this. It's not just my family, but all of my friends and a lot of my co-workers as well from work who are coming to see our wedding. If the wedding is canceled on the same day, then I'm going to be completely embarrassed and will never be able to show my face again. You say that, but from what I've noticed, not a single one of those friends or co-workers that you invited have come to the wedding yet. What? However, a lot of the guests I've invited today are already here and are patiently waiting for a wedding that's not going to happen now. When it comes to your guests, besides your parents, I haven't seen anyone else. Huh? You're lying. Why would none of them come? I went ahead and invited friends from back when I was in college and made sure to invite all of my co-workers from my department as well. Could this be all because of her? Her? <laughs> hey! 
hey, what you've done this time has gone way over the line. I invited pretty much everyone in our department, but not a single one of them has shown up to the wedding yet. You did something to keep them all from coming, right? Huh? What are you going on about now? Stop playing dumb here. I don't give a dang how much you hate me. What you've done today was totally not called for, and I am pissed. This is supposed to be the day of your little brother's wedding, and you thought it would be all right to keep half of the guests away from it? You're the worst. Wait, you have it all wrong. I wanted all of your friends and coworkers to come, actually. But they all told me that they had no plans of coming to your wedding. Huh? What do you mean? Well, this happens to be my brother's wedding, and I wanted as many people as possible coming to celebrate it. But when I was at work and went up to everyone asking if they'd be going, all of them replied by saying they were afraid of you. So I gave up on trying to get them to come because I could see they had no interest. I didn't set any of this up, so stop saying that. You're telling me that everyone had the same idea of not showing up to my wedding and that's why they're all not here? It wasn't their idea, but rather their reactions to everything you've been doing. None of them wanted to be here today because of you. And I don't blame them. You always went around the office all day bragging to them about how you'd be getting married and even belittled some of them. And any of the ones that are married, you started to make fun of their husbands. I don't think a single one of them are your friends anymore, Naomi. Are, are you sure? That's a little bit unbelievable to me. This isn't just about your marriage either. You always are on your phone when at work, and you will always have one of them doing your work for you. Everyone was so happy to hear from you that you planned to leave the company for a long time. You're kidding. Why would they be happy about that? I get that I wasn't often talked to by any of them while in the office, but that's just because everyone else wanted to be like me and thought of me as the popular kid at work. You can stop thinking crap like that about yourself anytime now. You need to come back to reality and change the way you've been behaving. If you keep acting like a high schooler while at work and even outside of work, nobody is going to like you. Not even your family. No, there's no way. There's no way in hell anyone would hate me like you're saying. You're just lying to me in order to make me feel like I've lost. You're the one behind all that's happened. You tried to make everyone look as though they hate me. And this is all because I'm young and beautiful and you're jealous of that. You really have no right saying things like that about me when not a single one of your guests have not shown. And I'm glad for them because once again, you're trying to make it seem as though I'm the one who's jealous of you and like I'm the one who caused all of this to happen. But really, all your coworkers and all of your friends know better than to come see more of you when you're acting like a freaking child. Nobody wants to see the wedding of a child, Naomi. Shut up! You're the one that should be in trouble for this. It's because of you that the biggest event in my life has gone to complete crap. I'm going to make you pay for all of this. Make me pay for what? Would you just stop it with this immature behavior? Shut the hell up. I'm going to make you wish you never worked in the same company as me. Tracy, I'm so sorry about today. It's fine, Sam. And let's be honest, it was kind of entertaining seeing the bride be taken out of this wedding by the police, right? That's not a normal occurrence. <laughs> I'm sure this was a good experience for all of us to learn from as well. I'm sorry. I didn't think she'd be the type to become even more enraged and try to attack you like that. I'm glad the security guard was there to grab her like that. But what if she had gotten close enough to hurt you? And this is why I was telling you everything about her before. She's a crazy witch. I see that now. I should have believed you long before today then. But really, back then, I was completely in love with Naomi. You don't have to defend yourself. It's totally in your rights to defend her, since she's your wife after all. But hey, I'm happy you were finally able to see the true Naomi today. You would have started having to live with her here soon, so things would have been a lot harder on everyone had you not noticed before then. Right. Thank goodness. Tracy, thank you for all of this. I haven't really done anything, though. 
Also, you happen to have an after party to get to now, right? You should go be with your guests. Well, this is a good place after all. So I suppose it would be right to at least experience the party. And I also don't want to go back home now either, since I'm sort of in a bad mood. Well, you should go enjoy that party then. Have a good time, all right? Wait, are you not going to come and party? I want you to be there. No, my husband and I plan on heading home now. You never invited an old, dominating lady to be at your wedding, right? <laughs> <laughs> After being taken into custody by the police that day, Naomi was able to get out of their hands come evening. But even though she was no longer being held in the county jail cell, she was still going to need to pay for the fines she got from the wedding, as well as for the cancellation fee and my ruined dress. All of that stacked up pretty well and led to her having to borrow a lot of money. Naomi had also quit her job the day before her wedding and assumed she'd never need to go back to the office again. But now, with no job and with no man who wants to be around her anymore, her pride has taken a massive hit. And because of that, she's moved back home to her parents' house where she's been hiding away in her room. Both of her parents were kind enough to not throw a woman like that out of their house. And they both believe they can fix her in some way. So these days, Naomi has been sticking close to her parents' house, doing part-time work in order to save up some money and pay off her debts. I find that she fell a long ways down from the belittling jerk that she once was. And since she can no longer hold herself to the standards she thought she had, I think I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of respectable woman her parents can turn her into. As for Sam, he's been saddened by everything that happened and by the fact that he had to leave his wife so soon. But recently, he started to hang out with this new girl, which is me a little worried because she might be just as bad as Naomi. However, I'm going to pray that that's not the case and that this new woman he's pulled in is a proper adult, and has a heart, too. When it comes to myself, I was able to move into that new department as a supervisor, and am now working toward the next promotion that I'm hoping I'll get. Hey, Renee, are you there? I just wanted to let you know that as of next week, my mom is going to come here and start to live with us. So I want you to clean up a spare room and get it ready to live in, because that is where mom is going to be staying. Wait, what? Your mom is going to be coming here to live with us starting next week, and you want me to get a room ready for her before then? I really don't think that's going to work, Tim. I mean, we've already talked about your mom coming to live with us, and I thought we agreed that it just wasn't a good idea. Besides, the both of us work full-time. I thought we agreed we wouldn't have time to take care of one of our parents if they did want to come and live with us. Excuse me? Just who do you think you are? Don't you realize that I'm the husband and you're the wife? Are you really trying to disobey me right now? Just who in the world do you think you are? Tim, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to disobey or argue with you. I just thought that this was something that you and I had already talked about. If you're not immediately agreeing to what I tell you to do, then that's basically the same as disobeying me. You really need to learn your place and listen to your husband. If you ever try and pull something like that again, don't think for a second that I won't divorce you. Tim, you, you can't be serious. Don't you think that's just a bit too far for this? Did you really already forget, Renee? I can't believe you don't remember that I already have everything in place to make that happen right away. Basically, if I wanted to, I could make it so that the two of us are divorced right away. And then I won't need to worry about taking care of such a useless woman like yourself. You should be grateful that I even told you that my mom was coming and didn't just let her show up unannounced. Now you're going to do as I say and go and prepare a room for my mom. And I don't want to hear another word or complaint from you about it. <coughs> hey Renee, what the heck is the matter with you? I thought I told you that I wanted that spare room cleaned up. Why is it still a complete mess, huh? Tim, I don't know what more you think I can do with that room. I mean, we had been using it as storage for so long. I don't think that I'm going to be able to move all of the things that we were keeping there all by myself. Well, you better, or else there are going to be some serious consequences. Besides, don't you want to be a good host for your mother-in-law? 
Don't you know that she raised me all by herself into the man that I am today? So I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to sit here and stand by while you make my mom live in a hovel like this. Tim, you know that I really admire your mom for how much she was able to accomplish all by herself. But it's just that, that there's too much stuff in that room. I just had it with you. You really are a completely useless woman and wife. Do you know that? My mom was also thinking about what was best for me, and she always gave her all when it came to raising me. She knew how to take care of a house much better than you did, and she had kids to worry about it. You're right, Tim. I'm, I'm sorry. I guess I've just been making excuses without even realizing it. Well, I have been realizing it the whole time. But don't you realize that if my mom doesn't come here to live with us, then she'll be all alone? That's why we have to make sure that everything is perfect for her when she gets here. I know how lonely she's been feeling and I don't want her, I don't want to make her think that we don't want her here. Well, I don't want her to feel like that either, but this room is just too much for me to do all by myself. So now you're telling me that you don't want my mom to come up here and live with us after all? I guess I should just tell my mom that she can't come after all because you hate her. Just kidding. If you ever actually try to push back against this, you know that I would just divorce you anyways. But if you can be, if I can be honest, I think you're the one that deserves to be alone, not mom. But Tim, you know that I own this house, don't you? What in the world are you talking about? What does that even have to do with anything? Well, I just mean that the lease that is letting us live here in the house is under my name. Y you know that, right? Is that supposed to be some kind of joke or something? What's the matter with you? What do you mean, what's the matter with me? I'm not sure what you mean by that. I mean that I know for a fact that you're lying to me right now, aren't you? Wait, you think that I'm lying about the house? Of course I'm not lying about the house. Why would I even do that? You really have hit a new low if you think you're just going to get away with flat out lying to your own husband like that. I mean, do you think I'm an idiot or something? Do you really think I was just going to fall for that? This is basically the same as you disobeying me. You realize that? The only thing that you should be doing is being a meek and submissive wife who stands next to me and looks pretty. That's all I ever wanted out of a wife. But instead, I had to be cursed with a no good useless woman like you. You're always so worried about yourself and complaining about your own problems. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but the world doesn't revolve around you. You really need to wake up and realize that other people matter too. Hello, Brenda. Do you have a moment to talk? I promise that I won't take long. I just wanted to say that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I haven't been a better daughter-in-law, and I'm sorry that I haven't been following through on my duties. I know that you weren't going to like to hear what I have to say next, but I, I think that from a financial standpoint and from just a making it work standpoint, y you aren't going to be able to move in with Tim and I. So I I'm really sorry to ask, but if you could please just talk to Tim about this and convince him that it isn't going to work, that would mean so much to me. Renee, what is all this? What are you talking about all of a sudden? You don't really think that you're a bad daughter-in-law, do you? Did my son go running his mouth at you again? <sighs> I swear that boy has no manners. Well, actually, Tim told me that if I didn't let you live with us that he would leave me. He said what? Has that boy lost his mind? What is the matter with him? Honestly, just where does he get off? I am so... So sorry that my idiot son has been putting you through so much. It's fine. After all, if he says it, then he must mean it. But I know that it's all true anyways. I know that I'm a weak link who could never survive on her own. The only thing I'm good at is letting people down and getting in their way. I don't even know why Tim is still with me, to be honest. After all, I'm just so useless. I can't do anything right at all, and I just don't deserve a man like him. Renee, you stop that right now. I want you to know that you have done nothing wrong at all, and you shouldn't be talking about yourself like that. Brenda, 
you, you aren't mad at me? You aren't agreeing with everything Tim has said about me. What are you talking about? Of course I don't agree with a word that Tim has said about you. It sounds to me like he's the one making ridiculous demands of you. But that shouldn't be what a marriage is about. A marriage should be an equal partnership between the married couple. If one person is putting the other down or not treating them with respect, well, I just see why you're so upset and unhappy with yourself. But I want you to know that if Tim is saying all of this to you, that it isn't something you've done as a wife. It's something I failed to do as a mother. No, Brenda, this isn't your fault at all. Pl please don't think that. I'm, I'm sure that you were a great mother who did all that she could. Renee, you really are such a sweet girl. Do you know that? Especially for how patient you've been in putting up with Tim. What do you mean by that? Do you really think that way about me? I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just not as good with my words after having lived alone for so long. But the point that I'm trying to make is that I don't think you're bad. And I certainly don't want you to think that you're the bad person in this in any way, okay? Brenda, thank you so much for telling me that. You have no idea how much I needed to hear that. But of course. I only say it because it's true after all. But now I feel like I just have to do something to help you. Help me? What do you think you could do? Well, I think now that I understand a bit more about the kinds of things that you've been going through at home, I want you to know that you always have someone to talk. Even if you feel like you can't talk to Tim about these things, you don't have to hold all that in sadness. But more than that, if my son is treating you this way and you really don't even think you can talk to him about it, then... I'm just not sure that a boy like Tim deserves a girl like you. Brenda, but then that means... Are you really saying what I think you're saying? I'm not saying anything. But I want you to know that no matter what happens, I'm going to have your side. You can count on me. So I want you to think about the best way forward for you. And just know that if there is any way I can help you, I will be more than happy to do whatever you need me to. You really mean that? You don't mind if I do what I think I need to do? Of course not. And if you ever need someone to talk to about what's on your mind or what you're thinking about, you can always come to me. Thank you. I just hope that I'm strong enough to do what needs to be done. Hey, Renee. Are you seriously ignoring me right now? What is your deal? Don't you know that you should be getting back to your husband as soon as you've gotten messages from him? You better get back to me right now or else I really will divorce you. This is not a joke. I'm very serious about this. I can't believe that you're making me wait this long just to talk to you. Don't you realize that this counts as disobeying me? Do you really want me to divorce you? Tim, please. Can you just stop this? I am your wife. I'm not your maid, I'm your partner. I really don't think that this is how a marriage should work at all. I mean, we're married. That means that we're family now. <laughs> what? Have you hit your head or something? Being a husband and wife only means anything if we're both doing our proper jobs. And you have been a complete failure of a wife. You don't listen to anything that I say at all, and you made me wait this long just to get a response from you. I know that you're probably always lying to me and finding ways to get out of your responsibilities to me and the house. So why don't you clean up your act before demanding things of me, huh? Tim, please. You don't have to be like this. We don't have to be like this. Maybe if you made more money than me, we might be able to have a conversation, but you don't. And if you have some complaint you want to give me, then you can just save it. I'd rather just divorce you and get this all over with. But I know that you're too weak and helpless to ever let me really get to that point, aren't you? Okay, Tim, if that's really what you want. If you want me to make changes around here, then let's get a divorce. Wait, what? Are you serious? You really want to get a divorce? 
I just... I can't even talk to you. You never even let me get a word in edgewise. What's the point of staying in this marriage if this is the way that I'm going to be treated? If we can't even have a conversation with each other? Well, of course I'm going to treat you this way when all you do is whine about how sad and pathetic you are. You really think I want to have a conversation with someone like you? And just what you think you're going to do with your life after you leave me, huh? You think you can live without me? You'll be crying and begging for help in no time. I really think that the only one of us who will be doing something like that will be you. <laughs> yeah, we'll just see about that, won't we? <laughs> hey, Renee, just where the heck do you think you're wandering off to? Why haven't you come back home yet? Don't you know you need to be here cooking dinner for me? I haven't eaten anything all day, and none of the laundry is done either. Plus, the house is a total mess. It's like you haven't been doing anything around the house at all. It's because I'm not. And it's because I'm not going to be cleaning up after you ever again. I am not your slave! And just where is this attitude coming from all of a sudden, huh? You really must want me to divorce you if that's the way you're going to be talking to me. Don't you remember that I have those signed divorce papers ready to be sent out whenever I want? You better watch how you talk to me. Because the moment I send those out, you'll be on the street with nowhere to live. But don't worry. Luckily for you, I'm a nice guy. So if you come home now and beg for my forgiveness on your hands and knees, I'll think about letting you off the hook this time. It's too late. I've already sent out those divorce papers that you had. Wait, what? What do you mean? You aren't really serious, aren't you? Of course I am. And then I put today's date by both our signatures and had them filed. But I... Why did you even have those in the first place? I kept them locked away in my safe in the office. Oh, I know where you were hiding them from me, Tim. But you made the combination to that safe your mom's birthday. After all, we all know just how much you love your mom. But that was your downfall, and that's how I got into the safe. So you broke into the safe and then took out those papers and sent them off to be filed? Have you lost your mind? Why in the world would you do something like that? Well, I'll let you know that I didn't do it alone. I had help. In fact, they agreed to help me specifically because it's you that I was dealing with. Well, whatever. I don't care how you did it. But I'll just invite my mom to come and live with me and make her do all the cleaning around here. That way, I can put time into thinking about how I can get back at you for this. I won't let you get away that easily. You regret this, Renee. The only one who is going to be doing any regretting is you, Tim. You evil, awful woman. What have you done? What's the meaning of this? What are you talking about, Tim? I'm sure that I have no idea in the slightest. Don't you play dumb with me. I want to know what this letter in the mail is all about. It's from some guy who said that he's your lawyer and that you're suing me? What are you doing that for? I didn't even do anything wrong. And why in the world do you have a lawyer? Actually, it was your mom who introduced me to that lawyer. Wouldn't you know it, but your mom has some experience with divorce as well. So, she connected to the same lawyer that she went through. Now you are going to pay me what you owe me and then you are going to leave my house. Don't you dare go trying to pin all this on my mom. How dare you even joke about that? But I'm afraid that the one who will be forced to move out is you. No. You're the one who's going to have to move out, Tim. I'm sure of that. After all, the house is under my name. There you go again with your crazy story of yours. It isn't a crazy story. I was the one who bought the house when we moved here. You told me that you couldn't be bothered with the paperwork and told me to do it all. So while I was filling out all the paperwork, I signed the house under my name. Actually, that one was also your mom's idea. What were you thinking? You should have told me about that part. Of course I would have signed any name. And just what are you and just why are you talking about my mom anyways? Well, because your mom had gone through this before. And she was the one who put up most of the money for the house. So, when she told me what to do, I listened. 
It was only later that she told me it's a kind of insurance in case we got divorced. She explained how it would protect me from getting kicked out of the house. But if you really think I'm making this all up, then you go check the file cabinet in your office. I don't care what you say. I know that this house is mine and nothing is going to change that. I don't know what my mom has been telling you, but clearly you've been taking her advice the completely wrong way. I really don't think that's what's going on here at all, Tim. Yes, it is, and I know it. My mom would never betray me. I know that she'll always have my back. <coughs> mom, are you there? We have to talk right now. This is really serious. Renee is saying some seriously crazy things, and I just don't know what to think anymore. But all I know is that that woman is nuts, and we have to get rid of her. She's saying all kinds of things about how you're helping her try to divorce me, but that's not true, right? You're always on my side, aren't you? I mean, I'm your son. There's no way that you would take her side over your own son, right? You may be my son, but that does not mean that you aren't also one of the most ridiculous people I've ever known. What do you mean by that? I mean that I heard all about what's been going on from Renee. About how you've been ordering her around like some kind of maid. But you forgot that she was the one who owns the house. You pushed your wife to the point of leaving you and now you've got nothing. No, you don't get it. Renee was also happy to help. That's why I would give her things to do. She wanted to do what I say. Oh, give me a break. Do you really think that? You need to wake up. You're in denial right now, Tim. You have been nothing but a horrible bully to your wife who had been nothing but kind and patient with you. I don't know what happened to make you be like this, but I can't help feel at fault and you make me ashamed. Mom, what are you talking about? I was just trying to be a good husband. And a good husband tells his wife what to do, right? Besides, it wasn't like she even did a good job with the cooking and cleaning. Do you really think that it's only the women who should have to cook and clean their own house? I'm your mother and even that's too old-fashioned for me. You know, you're just like your father. He did the exact same thing. Wait, Dad also never did anything around the house? That's right. And I didn't want to speak badly about either of you, so I've kept silent for this long. But you are both horrible, overbearing bullies. You both have got no respect for your wives, and you're completely pig-headed. So then, you're telling me that you're really going to pick this other woman over your own son? We're blood relatives, Mom. Are you sure about that, Tim? Are you really sure about that? What is that supposed to mean? What do you mean I'm sure about that? Of course I'm sure about that. Think of all the things that you've done for me and think of the nothing that you've given back to Renee for all that she does for you. On Mother's Day, you bring me flowers. For my birthday, you've gotten me vouchers for a spa. But you know what's something that none of your gifts have come with? A phone call. Even a letter. They were only ever just things. Mom, please. You have to know how busy I am all of the time here. It's not just that. When I would invite you two out to eat with me, you would always turn me down and it would just be Renee and I. I would tell her that I'm sorry she ended up going out with just her mother-in-law, but we really got close over that time. In the end, I probably came to care for her more than you did. And so what? Is that the reason why you're going to choose Renee over me, your own son? I still think that's just ridiculous. If you still really think that, then I wonder if you've been reading a single word of these messages. But if there's one thing you're good at, it's not listening. When you came to me asking if I'd like to live with the two of you, I turned you down and said that I didn't want to be a burden. But then you turned around and put all the housework on Renee. When I saw and heard about the way that you were treating her, I remember a chill running up my spine. It was all because of how much you reminded me of your father. And do you remember how him and I ended up? But Renee and I talked about it. I was able to convince her to let you come and live with us. Tim, I already told you that I didn't want to. Besides, I talked to Renee about this too, and she told me about how you completely ignored her opinion on the matter. I am just so disappointed in you, Tim. And that's why you leave me with no choice. I just have to cut you out of my life. I can't be around you anymore. 
You are no longer my son. Instead, I'm going to take care of Renee and make sure that she doesn't have to go through what I did. Hold on a second, Mom. This is nuts. I mean, you're really going to abandon your son for his wife? How can you do this to me? I'm not abandoning you because I was never on your side to begin with, Tim. What do you mean? Why would you say something like that? Because it's true. I was always only ever concerned about how you'd end up treating Renee. And when she told me all about what you were doing, I, I knew I had to introduce her to my lawyer. But mom, you can't leave me like this. It isn't fair, please. But mom, you can't leave me like this. It isn't fair, please. Maybe it's time you learn how to take care of yourself for once. But how am I going to be able to do that when Renee is suing me? I don't even have enough money to hire lawyers things are now. Well, that sounds like a you problem, Tim. But Renee has done more than her fair share of taking care of you, and you have taken advantage of her for the last time. After that, the divorce was settled and the alimony payments were made. Tim was left without a penny to his name by the time the whole thing was over. After that, he had to pack things and move to a cramped little apartment that he was able to afford. I heard that he got so frustrated with his new living situation and the piling garbage and chores in his room that he began to take out his anger on his colleagues. All that got him in the end was being fired, though. After that happened, I heard that Tim moved again and I've never heard another word about him since. After divorcing Tim, I was able to focus more on myself and realize just how used to taking his orders I had become. But I guess it isn't until after you've gotten yourself out of a hole that you can really see just how deep it was. Thankfully, I had Brenda by my side to help guide me into the divorced life. It was thanks to her that I never gave up hope about my life after the divorce. In fact, after Tim was out of my life, it was like a great weight had been taken off my shoulders. But I don't think it was only from finally leaving Tim. I think it was also because while I may have lost my husband, I gained a mother in Brenda. I don't know what I would have done if I didn't have someone like Brenda by my side supporting me. In fact, it was only after the divorce was over that Brenda told me all about how she was trying to watch over me. I don't know what I would have done without her there for me. Ren, what the hell do you think you're doing? Uh-huh. What, Mom? Why are you asking something like that out of nowhere? I want to know what you're doing. I just saw you walking out in front of the subway station a second ago. That was you, right? What do you think you're doing walking around like that in public? I guess that was me because I was just walking near there. So you happen to see me then? And question why I'd be walking around? I sure as hell did see you. Tell me what the hell is going on, right now! To what extent are you going to keep acting all reserved and careless about things when you look like that? Huh? It's been five years since the last time I saw you in person, and there has not been a single thing about you that's changed. Your sister happens to be a model, and is making it big in that business. So why are you so simple and not doing anything fun with your life? Were you really born from the same parents as her? I don't think that's something the person that literally gave birth to me should be asking. Not only is your face not as cute as hers, but I tried so hard for so long to make you the cute little girl I always wanted you to be. And this is how I'm repaid? You never once listened to the things I said you should be doing. Well, the reason I never turned out like Jessica is probably due to the fact that I don't care for makeup or dressing in fancy clothing. And I'm telling you right now that that's not a good thing. Please, just become a little bit more like your big sister. I mean, she's been on live television multiple times now, unlike you. If people begin to find out that she has such an uncool little sister like you, they might stop caring about her. I don't feel like her and I have anything to do with one another, though. Ugh, I've had enough of this. I don't even want to think of you as my little girl anymore. I knew long ago that after you graduated from school, I should have just cut ties with you completely. Well, you did end up kicking me out of the house then, so that's pretty much the same thing, right? Well, starting today, I'm going to never speak to you again. 
I never want an ugly woman like you in my sights ever again. And I mean that. A sure thing. You didn't even have to tell me that because that was my plan from the start. You really have not a single thing about you that makes you decent, you brat. And I'd better never see you walking around town in such a laid-back fashion again, either. It embarrasses me knowing that my disgrace of a daughter is out somewhere where everyone can see her. <laughs> What's gotten into you this time? You really have the worst personality out of anyone. Thank you for going out for coffee with me today. I have to meet with someone relating to my job there later today, and I didn't want to just sit around on my own for a few hours waiting. So you being around to talk with me for a bit and have a cup was very kind of you. No worries, Jessica. And thank you for paying for coffee for me. Also, as for what Mom had told you today, you really don't have to worry about a word she said to you, all right? She just happens to be a toxic witch is all. I totally understand that. And luckily for myself, I haven't been worried by anything she said. Are you sure? If you really aren't upset by her, then that's good. But are you sure you're not taking everything she said personally and are hiding it from me? I don't want you to be dealing with all this on your own, okay? I told you I'm fine. You're getting too worried over nothing. If anything, I think it's because I think it's you between the two of us that's getting all worked up by what she said to me. What? Jessica, you've lived your whole life being cared for so dearly by mom all the time, right? So when you see me being treated like I'm not even her daughter, that probably makes you uncomfortable. It does, actually. I have always felt a bit unnerved by everything she does to you. But for the longest time, I haven't ever been able to do anything to help you when things like that start again. You don't have to worry about it, though. You and I have been friends forever, so we didn't know how to deal with situations like this. So don't feel like I'm angered at you or anything over it. Also, when Dad was still around, he was there to make sure I had someone who cared for me. That's true. Dad was such a great man. But I still can't forgive myself for never stepping in. Do you not realize that I'm thankful for you? When I was kicked out of the house after high school, you allowed me to come to your house for a while. If it wasn't for you doing such a thing, I'd have been left to the streets. Don't feel thankful for that. At the time, I hated living by myself anyway, so it was for my own selfish wants. And back then, Mom was paying for half my rent and for a lot of my things in the place. So I was blessed with the house I was allowed to live in. And also, once you moved in, you started to do all the chores and cooking for me. So I really can't have you thanking me for any of that. Oh, come on now. You were never going to clean your house or cook for yourself because you were too busy being a model. I'd thought that at the time, that if I didn't start to cook for you, then you might start to gorge yourself on fast food and ruin the body that's gotten you your career. See? I should be thanking you for taking care of me back then. Honestly, I'm a terrible older sister to you. Well, I'm totally fine with you being a terrible older sister, so you don't have to get all down about it. Now, how many more times are you going to have me calm you down like this? I hate seeing you sad about everything, so I do it on my own wants. But you really need to get a hold of yourself out there. You are right, though. I need to stop relying on you to make me feel better like this. Understand that I'm not angry at you about anything right now, and that I'm thankful for having you as my older sister. Seriously. All right, that's the end of this conversation, then. All right. I'm sorry. Sorry about getting this way every time. I'll do my best to not get so worked up from now on. Thank you again, Ren. Please take better care of yourself for me. I'll try. See you again next week? I'm really looking forward to coming out with you to choose your wedding dress. Now, I've already told you before that I'm going to choose my dress, all right? <laughs> no, you're not. I think I've told you before as well that you do not have a single sense in fashion. So if I let you choose a dress for yourself, <laughs> it'll be a disaster. This is going to be for one of your biggest days in your life. So please let me be the one to choose your dress for you. Dang it. I hate having to let my older sister pick out my dress for me. But then again, you are the model, so you have a far better idea of what's right for my body than even I do. Just make sure whatever you choose for me isn't too gaudy. See you next week. See you soon. Hey, Ren. Have you had a look at the picture I just sent you? What? I just saw it. What is this? Are you planning to go to a funeral soon? I know what's going on with you. 
you're going to be having a wedding here soon? <laughs> I can't believe that my own daughter would try to keep her very own wedding a secret from her mother. And I'm sure you have no plans of inviting me to your wedding, either. Well, don't worry, because I've been able to find out all the details regarding you and your upcoming wedding. <laughs> um, I guess I'm getting married soon. What does me getting married and having a wedding have to do with you and the funeral clothing you have there? Well, I suppose it wouldn't be any fun leaving you here without telling you everything you should know about this. <laughs> oh, now, today is the day of your wedding, correct? What? Today, I'm planning on going to your wedding, and I'm going to be wearing these clothes to your wedding as if it were a funeral. Ha! Huh. And the reason why? Because a simple little brat like you would look a lot better having your mother dressed up for a funeral on your wedding day. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second, Mom. My wedding isn't today, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've already looked into all of it, so don't even bother trying to fool me now. <laughs> well, now that you know what you have to look forward to today, I hope you prepare yourself. <laughs> Hold it right there. There are a lot more guests here than I was anticipating. <laughs> It's quite amazing that someone like you would be able to fool this many people into coming to your wedding of all things. Oh. You're lying, right? You really went there? Um, Mom, I think it's best if you just turn around and went home right now. I'm not joking around. I have no reason to be going home now after coming all the way out here. I can tell that the wedding will be getting started very soon here. I hope you're looking forward to seeing me when you get out on stage. Mom, why are you still trying to harass me like this? I thought you already told me you cut ties with me, so I don't get why you're still trying so hard to be around me. Can't you just leave me be and go enjoy your own life? The only reason I'm here to mess with you right now is because you never invited me. What the hell did you think you were doing when not inviting your own mother? Do you not feel any form of thanks for all the years I spent raising you? You already told me that you wanted to cut ties with me, though. Why are you still going on about all of this when you don't even want me as your daughter? It's starting to become a headache for me trying to figure out how you really feel right now. Are you mentally okay? Shut your little mouth. No matter how much I don't want you to be my daughter, you will still respect me as your mother and be punished for acting out of line. Now please, get yourself ready to really enjoy the wedding you're putting on for everyone. <laughs> Of course, I'll be waiting for you. And the clothing I found matched my feelings for you the best. <laughs> Why are you trying to do this to me? Seriously. I find it very thoughtful of me, coming in this all-black dress for my plain daughter's wedding today. I'm sure you'll want the wedding cancelled once you see how everyone else reacts to seeing the bride's mom in funeral clothing. <laughs> I already had my wedding yesterday, though. What? My wedding was yesterday. Today you're at the wedding of some complete stranger. You're lying to me, right? There's no way I got all the information wrong. I know for a fact that the person who told me the details of your wedding would never mess any of the details up. Tell me, Mom, who is the one that told you about my wedding? Who? I just heard about it through some rumors, is all. Through rumors. So what the hell were you just talking about? You made it sound like you had some kind of important informant, you idiot. Well, anyway, my wedding is not today, Mom. I can give you all the evidence you need of that right now if you want. No way. You weren't kidding. I have no idea who either of these people are that just walked out. If you knew that today wasn't your wedding, then tell me that sooner! I knew something was off here. All of these really good-looking guys here, why would any of them ever go to a wedding for you, of all people? Ugh, you really are such an imbecile. Well, have fun at the stranger's wedding. Bye-bye! Wait a second. Hey, wait a second. Rin, you reply to me right now. Come on. How many gosh dang times are you going to try calling me today? It's pretty freaking annoying. I'm tired from my wedding yesterday and would really like to relax. Can you just save all of your BS for another day? Hey, please. Come help me. 
For some reason, I felt a little bit of fear by being at this stranger's wedding, and now I know why. I'm trying to leave, but they're not letting me go home now. They are saying that I'm from another gang, and I'm trying to make a point at the wedding. Oh, God, that's pretty scary, Mom. Well, I'm sure that they think that you were trying to harass the bride or groom in some way by showing up in all black for a funeral. I want you to talk to them right now and tell them this was all a big mistake. If you don't, I'm not sure what's going to happen to me. What's the situation like right now? I ran and locked myself in the bathroom. But they keep banging on the door, asking me to let them in. They keep telling me they're going to all teach me a lesson, but I'm just an old and confused woman who got the dates wrong is all. I tried explaining that to some of the guests, but not a single one of them wanted to listen to me. Well, that might have to do with them all thinking you came to the wedding dressed in black to try to harass someone. Ugh, all right. I'll go ahead and give the reception hall a call and see if I can explain what's happened to them. Really? Thank you. I went ahead and had a talk with someone on the phone, and I think I cleared everything up for them. Of course, you're not going to be let off the hook easily, though. You went and ruined a very important wedding to someone, after all. That's what they're telling me now. They're telling me to pay half of the wedding costs right now. Pretty kind of them to only be asking you for half, right? I was thinking having you pay for everything would have been correct punishment. But I can't even pay for half the wedding, Ren! Would you please give me some money? That's going to be a no from me, Mom. Why should me, the one you were trying to harass today, give you any kind of money to help you out of your own mess? You should be happy I was kind enough to even call the wedding place and explain why you were ruining the wedding in the first place. But that's it from me now. You figure out how to pay them on your own. What kind of heartless woman are you? This is why I call you such a plain and ugly woman all the time. The only reason you've called me is that because you're a stupid witch. Well, that's it from me. You're really not getting any of my help now. Wait a second. I'm sorry about that. I I'm sorry. Hey, 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 I I'm really sorry, okay? Your own mother is apologizing to you now, right? <coughs> Jessica? Hey, wake up. What? Why are you calling me over and over like that? I'm really tired right now and I'm trying to sleep in. Can you just call me later today or something? Do not start acting like your heartless sister to me now, too. Hey, can you please let me borrow some of your money? What was that? A few things have happened to me, and I'm in real need of some money. You are model, after all, so you must have a lot of money on you, right? If you have $20,000 just sitting around, that'll be enough for me. So please, just give me that and I won't bother you anymore. Oh, uh, I just got a message from Ran explaining the whole situation to me. I see what's going on here now. What? A message from Ren? Just now? I can see now that you're going to try asking me for help. Well, now you at least know what's happened to me, right? I'm sure you already know how much your little sister hates me and all that, but I know you'll be kind enough to help me, right? Right? You really think I'd want to help you? I sure do. After all, I've done everything and anything for you all your life to make sure you were happy. Unlike that little worthless brat, Ren, you are the cutest daughter imaginable. You also happen to have a wonderful job. I was the one that helped you get that job as a model as well, right? You are my pride. I knew it, Mom. You're the worst! Hey, I know that this time I may have taken things a little too far, all right? Ah, right. Can you please come to the reception hall right now? Huh? Well, why should I go there? Well, you're a famous celebrity, aren't you? If you come here right now, you'll make a lot of these people very happy, and I won't have to pay them anything in order to leave. What? Are you really saying that? If you could just give a few of them your signature and... Take a few photos with them. I'm sure they'll let me go. So please. So you're going to use your own daughter to get you out of a sticky situation with some strangers that you chose to piss off? I'm a little lost for words here. You're rotten. Why are you calling your own mother rotten? 
Do you not realize that it's because of me that you're even able to be a famous model right now? I was the one that sent your resume and everything to that agency and got you hired by them. Even though I told you time and time again that I didn't want you doing that. Because of that, you're very famous. So who cares? And yeah, I guess I am a very famous model now, but I wouldn't say that it's all because of you. I was the one that had to work hard to become the woman I am. And you never did anything to teach me how to actually be a model. So don't act like I owe you anything for handing in my resume. Because I don't. To be honest, I didn't even want to be a model in the first place. I was only 16 at the time, and what you did forced me to quit high school. I then had to go live on my own in New York, practicing for something I never wanted. I was forced into a life of no choices because of you, Mom. A life I never even wanted. Is that so? Well, I I never knew that you didn't want to become a model and move out to that agency. I told you so many times that I didn't want to go. But you never once listened to me. You used the fact that I wouldn't stand up for myself to make me live the dream you probably wanted for yourself but could never have. I wanted to just run away from you both and live my own life, but I knew there was one person who was really cheering me on. And she was Ren. I get it, all right? And we can go ahead and talk about all of that at a later time, okay? I think I may have made some mistakes back then. But right now, it's a bit of an emergency for me. What do you mean it's an emergency for you? To both Ren and I, we view this as you getting what's been coming for you. I don't have any reason to help you out of that situation. Goodbye forever now. You freaking backstabber! I went through all that trouble favoring you over your little sister. And for what? And I have a few things to say about all of that as well, but I'm sure someone like you would never understand what I mean. I guess I'll try my best to explain things in the most simple way I can. I happen to really love Rin, and seeing you ignore her and toss her aside all my childhood so that you could only focus on me really hurt. To me, she is the only family I have left ever since Dad passed away, and I'm not going to side with you over her. I have no need for you in my life. Goodbye forever now. Wait a sec. Hey! <laughs> Ren, I have something to ask you, so please respond to me. I can see that you're reading all these texts, so you haven't blocked me yet, right? I have something very serious that I'd like to talk to you about. I've already been blocked by your sister, so I'm not able to get in touch with her anymore. Go ahead. I was just thinking that today would be the perfect day to finally block you, so this will be your last chance to talk to me. I was kicked out of the apartment building that I was living in. I wasn't able to pay for the rent there anymore. Look, after what happened at that stranger's wedding, I was forced to pay a lot of money that I haven't been able to make back. Hmm? And... I know now that I have done a few bad things in the past as well, okay? I know that very well now. I will apologize to you in person the next time I see you. So please just help me out. You've done a few bad things in the past as well? Oh, so that must mean you feel as though I've done some bad things in the past too then. Uh, no, that's not at all what I meant by that. I know for a fact that you do feel as though I'm still in the wrong for everything. So you were kicked out of that apartment? Sucks to suck, doesn't it? <laughs> Good luck with whatever you end up with next, okay? What? Hey, hold on. Do you plan to just throw me away then? Well, look, Mom. It's not like you're working a job or anything. And for the past few years, you've been relying on Jessica to help pay for your bills, right? Well, that didn't have to do with me not having any of the money myself. All that time, I had enough money left over from your father after he passed away. What did you end up using all his money on, then? Have you been gambling it all away? <laughs> no. I had to hire myself someone to help me start searching for where both you and your older sister are living. I have really been wanting for both you guys and I to become a family again. I see, I see. And even with a hired pro helping you out, you still couldn't find us. So over time, you kept dumping more and more money into the pro for nothing. That's right. So, please, can you at the very least tell Jessica that I'm wanting to talk to her? Huh? Why do you need to talk with her now? 
Um, well, it turns out that the pro I hired happens to be a really big fan of Jessica and all. So I promised him that if he can help me find her, I'll let him get to know her better. He said if that's the case, then he'd void the rest of the money I owe him. Unbelievable. So both you and that pro are just creepy and stupid? Also, why the hell do you need a pro to help you search for us? Just do it yourself. Well, that pro I hired is actually stupid, and that's why I still haven't been able to find either of you. You both are brain-dead idiots. Can't with you anymore. That's it. If you think you can just keep trying to rely on your daughters for money, then it's better you just forget about being our mom. Wait, this isn't about only money. But you have to understand that I don't have anything anymore. I need some money at the very least from one of you. Sorry, I'm not in the mood to help you out. And I sure never will be. Would you please stop trying to find either one of us? If you keep all of that up, someone might find out you're our actual mother, and that might make Jessica look bad. <laughs> After that, my mom was somehow able to get herself into a really run-down apartment, but she needed to continue borrowing money in order to feed herself, only inching herself closer to hell. She'd gotten herself a part-time job and all, but uses the money she makes there to keep searching for Jessica. I'm not saying there are better ways she could be taking care of herself, but I will say that if she doesn't put some of that money into paying off her debts, she's going to have actual hell to pay. But of course, she really only seems to see us as walking banks and seems to think that she still has a chance of getting our money if she ever does end up finding us. <laughs> By the way, I haven't actually blocked her number yet because I find it so much fun watching all the messages pour in from her asking for our help and updating me on her current disgraceful situation. But I'm sure that in time, as her debt continues to grow worse and worse, she'll come to realize that neither Jessica nor I care about her, and that she's going to have bigger problems that she needs to worry about. Of course, that's only if she has the brains to realize what kind of trouble she's really getting into with all that debt. <laughs> a few years later, my older sister ended up retiring from her career as being a model. She did so with the goal of being able to go out and do all the things she wants now, which will probably include her going overseas for a while. I haven't really spoken to her much lately, but that's just because she has a life of her own for once now, and someday I look forward to her dropping by my place again so that I can learn all about the things she's been up to. When it comes to my mom, neither Jessica or I have heard very much about her besides the fact that her last known location was at her apartment after being fired from her part-time job. I'd assume that those that she was indebted to ended up losing their patience on her, started making their moves on her, leading to her being removed from everyone's daily life. She never did end up finding Jessica or myself, either, and her last text to me was a year ago, letting me know that there was someone following her home a lot of the time. As for myself, I'm going to have my first baby this year, and will now have a family of three. I'm sure compared to my sister, my life and everything is just really plain and simple, but I happen to like having my simple family around me every day, making me a proud and happy mother and wife, and no person is ever going to make me feel bad about that. 